Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Gordon. We are back to continue our playthrough of Rogue Trader. So, just to let you guys know, in between episodes I went and checked out my inventory here. There is still a lot of random stuff in here, but I did send a bunch of crap over to the cargo. Uh, stuff we weren't really using like, I don't know, scrappy pistols and, and las guns and stuff that I never ever use. And I had multiples of. I just sent to the cargo. Uh, I kind of considered respecting Argenta. It's something that's been on the back of my mind for a while. And it's mostly because of something in the soldier archetype. Because I picked Concentrated Fire, which I love. And I also picked Entrench, which I like. But it's more on the safe side, it's more of a conservative skill. I still like it because, like, we're playing on Unfair, uh, cover doesn't really do much, and this gives us a plus 30% bonus to cover efficiency. I think it can be quite handy to keep Argenta, you know, healthy, but it kind of pains me that I don't have Rapid Fire. The Soldier's next burst attacks will have its rate of fire doubled, but deal less damage. At the same time, this isn't a problem because less damage is negated by another feature, that will negate this penalty. And thinking about a heavy bolter that fires 8 times, this would mean 16 shots on a single burst. So let's imagine 16 shots plus concentrated fire, so every shot is dealing more than double damage. There, there's, there's a lot to like to this. I kind of went against it partly because I'm lazy <laughs> and partly because I, I still like having Entrench as a defensive option. I just don't just want to go full out offensive with her. I think it might be a little bit too risky. And I also looked over my colony management. And I didn't, you know, I didn't try to meta game anything here. I'm just going to go for what makes sense for me in an initial playthrough. So I haven't checked if it's more efficient to take one thing or the other. I'll just go for what makes sense to me. So if I was just trying to improve my main character, the first project I would take for Dargonus would naturally be Extasiums for the Nobility. It's just a straight up plus 2 profit factor, plus 2 complacency, and a plus 5 to all of the main character skills, which is very nice, very handy. Uh, the Emporium here, I didn't actually check what this one does. Uh, the route cost minus minus 1, but I think for the most part I think we're kind of fine with the route costs. But that's not the main reason. The main reason here is that in terms of uh, colony management, this gives us one profit factor, which isn't even, you know, affecting the colonies, and it lowers security, while restoration, which is the one I'm going to pick, gives plus one complacency, efficiency, and security for all colonies. So right now, in total, this would be like a, a plus three, plus three, plus three. It will cost me <clears throat> one profit factor, but... I think that right now, as we stand, I have more profit factor than I can realistically use. Because I don't have enough reputation with the different factions to actually make use of this profit factor of 46. Um, so, just going for, I think, what makes the most sense for overall uh, bonuses, this will be my choice. So, a new hive city will be established on top of the ruins of Scipione 84-249. Execute this one. Oh, right. On Janus, we got this again. So I think that, like, if cer a certain amount of time passes and I come back to my colony, I'm just going to get plus 10 of these. Okay. I should start using this. Maybe. <laughs> Probably on Avalard. We will see. Uh, so for this one, we can't do anything yet. That's right. And on Foulstone, I do believe I have decided. So, our choices are between the Cemetery of the Faithful and Good Tidings. So, this one gives the flagship a 5% bonus to evasion. Just cool. More reputation with the Drusians and complacency for all colonies, it's plus one. Versus Good Tidings, which is complacency for all colonies, plus two. And we get this one. All allies gain plus three times the allies dogmatic rank percent critical hit chance. So this is mainly good for Argenta. 
this would give her a 9% bonus to critical hit chance, which is not bad, but it doesn't do much else for anyone uh, else in the group. Now, I think my decision is going to be based on what these block. So Good Tidings blocks Bonfires of the Righteousness, which means if I pick this one, I would pick Maglev Railways afterwards, which gives me this Requiemator. Whenever the wearer kills their target with a melee attack, all allies in a two-cell range around the wearer suffer the wearer's willpower bonus mental damage. Not really going to do much with this. I'm not using any kind of melee psyker. I'm not using Heinrichs. So I don't think it's going to be that helpful. Although we do have Reveal the Light from Cassie, which does give a, a large amount of, of willpower. So we can actually kind of make it work. Uh, more reputation to explorators, more efficiency and more complacency for this, um, this colony, which I like. And then we have Bonfires of the Righteousness, which would give us Epiphany, uh, which is a sword, one-handed. If the wielder kills an enemy with charge, the ability has no cooldown. And I do like this a lot. But my issue with this is that the weapon itself doesn't really seem that interesting, right? It doesn't give us the parry bonus that the other ones do. Um, it, the, it only has cleave, it doesn't have the, um, the really large AoE that a two-handed sword or a two-handed hammer, hammer have. So I'm kind of afraid that this weapon by itself is going to be... is going to lose its efficiency quite quickly. So I won't be using this to charge anyone anyway. <clears throat> Maybe most of my damage at some point will come from strength or something like that, but I I don't I don't think that's the case. Again, I could be wrong, um, but it doesn't seem like the best choice here. So I actually like this one. This one comes from good tidings as well, and we get nine percent critical hit chance on Argenta, which is a good thing to take. Honestly, I think I probably liked the evasion to the flagship a little bit more because it, it's going to be useful for the, the ship battles, which I'm struggling with. This is always good and complacency for all colonies. Being for all colonies is very appealing to me, but we're going to go for good tidings here. It's also good. Execute. <clears throat> and that's it. So Janus, we are still waiting. Dargonus is done. We have to wait. Okay. So... We were going to explore the Administratum. Oh, and it requires... Okay, requires J. So in that case, I forgot to do this. Uh, I'm going to level up J. It shouldn't take too long, but I'm just going to pause the video so you guys don't have to suffer through me going by the choices. I'll be right back. Okay, my friends, I am back. <laughs> so basically, we get one AP increase from being level 15 or level 20. 20. I got some points into Fellowship here and here. We got Nerves of Steel, so it's kind of the same thing I did for my main character. Whenever the Master Tactician or their allies gain momentum, they gain plus one more. Whenever the Master Tactician or their allies lose momentum, they lose one less. Just building up momentum is something that we want. I picked Lynchpin over here. So this is what, something that I was considering giving to my main character before, but I actually picked Inspired on him. And this will give plus one resolve for every five stacks of tactical advantage the Master Tactician has, but the Master Tactician loses half of their stacks of tactical no advantage. This effect stacks and lasts until the end of combat. We also got stacking the deck as a feature. Whenever the Master Tactician spins tactical advantage stacks on abilities, the critical damage dealt by the Master Tactician increases by 1% for every stack spinned. Oh, I read this wrong. This is by the Master Tactician, not the ally. <clears throat> okay, so wait, I gotta swap this. I know what I'm gonna swap it for, don't worry. And I think it's this one here. Support the advance. At the beginning of the Master Tactician's turn, if their momentum is higher than 125, the first burst fire or area attack used by the Master Tactician this turn costs one less action point. Since she is using pistols and basically dual wielding them, if I remember correctly, um... Giving her, you know, less AP for burst attacks, I think is going to be a cool thing to have. And maybe after that, I can go for stacking the deck. I'm giving her some Medica just because I don't really see what else I could give her. Lord Xenos is covered, Lord Warp is covered. Yeah. <clears throat> this will be it for her. In terms of items, 
Do I want to give her something? Okay, so she has these weird pistols. But I... Uh, splinter pistol and shuriken pistol. The shuriken pistol seems to be... Let's just say different right now. So she can have it. Uh, in terms of armor, she has sin skin. This is the same thing. So it doesn't make much of a difference either. Oh, this one is better, right? Base armor property. Plus 5% dodge if the wearer's agility is more than 40. It's not more than 40. It's just 40. So it doesn't actually count. So I will go for this one. <clears throat> uh, in terms of rings... You can take this one, why not? And you can also take this one. She already has boots, fine. Gloves, she has... Parry melee attacks with a ranged weapon with a skill instead of weapon skill. Okay. It's not terrible. The other ones also aren't very... Interesting. Five Lord in Xenos, 10% hit against Xenos, okay. Why is this here? No psychic power attack, they either restore 2 AP or... Oh, okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah. Whenever an ally in the defective voice of command makes an attack during a turn, this attack deals an additional 3 times fellowship bonus percent damage. Uh, it's kind of hard to manage this because I have 3 people casting voice of command. So, let's not do that. Logic, Medica. Eh. <clears throat> this might actually be better. Okay, take this one. And in terms of necklaces, not much. Okay, let's let's go like this. I imagine it's not going to be much of an issue. I don't expect having her in my party for too long anyway. So. Okay, administrate them. Uh, I will take out Pascal to bring her in. My only problem is I have three officers, which is awesome. <laughs> I don't want to lose Cassia. I think Cassia is just way too good to, to not have in the party. And I also want these three. So, yeah, this is my, gonna, my lineup right now. Pascal will have to wait a little bit. And I think she's required because there's a quest here for her. Sorry, I forgot to skip the loading screen. Ah, drinking some coffee. You two go over there. Turn after turn, the unceasing stream of petitioners pours through the palace doors. The strong-willed wait patiently, while the weak will try everything they can to get ahead of the others. Of oh, cutscene. Greeting protocol. Welcome to the palace of the Adeptus Administratum. Identifying your lordship. Please follow me. Okay. Mr. Vox Caster thingy. Checking coordinates. Continue in this direction to reach our destination. Your visit has been logged. No, 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 no. Can I? Okay, I have to actually click over there. <laughs> Give me the... Go what is this? The towering piles of papers and endless shelves heaving with ledgers evoke special reverence for the laws of the God Emperor in the hearts of the servants of the Adeptus Administratum. I'll lay claim to the stars. Uh, we can't speak to this guy. Attention, malfunction in waiting hall, expected outcome, replacement of operational servitor. Inquell of... Livalia the Impartial, first master of seals of the Kronos Expanse. Sacred Scroll, the 1005 admonitions of master of inventory, inventory of Asilus to the adepts of the Administratum. And the master of seals. An ancient looking woman in a voluminous robe peers at you critically through her ocular lenses when you descend into the bowels of her bureaucratic domain. Another noble bypassing the queue under the pretext of just wanted to ask. All you highborn ever want is just to ask. But what about protocol? That's what I'm asking. 
Who is going to follow protocol? Jay glances at you and whispers. What? So I paid off a few clerks to let us skip the queue, Shireen. Your time is more important to me than any formalities. Very well, don't just stand there, you're here now. Or do you think the Master of Seals has nothing better to do than receive unexpected visitors? The old woman beckons over a servo skull floating nearby. Begin entry. Current hour, current turn, current cycle, 41st millennium. Metal manipulators immediately begin feverishly clacking, taking dictation. What is this place? The Master of Seals raises an eyebrow in surprise. You are in the very heart of the palace of the Adeptus Administratum. Day and night, hundreds of thousands of prefects, ordinates, scribes, servants and servitors carry out their duties to humanity and the Von Valencius dynasty here, never setting foot outside its boundaries for decades at a time. But knowledge comes through comparison. There are entire worlds belonging to the Administratum, so this palace is but a humble cog in the blessed machine of the Imperium. Tell me about yourself. I am the law and I oversee order in this section of the Cronus Expanse, as well as on worlds of the Von Valentis Protectorate, in accordance with ancient covenants made to our ancestors. Oh, she knows who I am then. I hold the power to grant petitioners what they seek and to punish criminals for failing to carry out the Imperium's will. Jay continues in a whisper. She's ancient enough for herself. Look at her, she's a bona fide living mummy. <laughs> Don't you want to know who I am? Cordum von Valencius, sole heir of rogue trader Theodora von Valencius, may the throne's radiance guide the path on the other side. In a practiced move, the Master of Seals twists her magnifying ocular lens and examines the ledger in front of her, the sole person to publicly assert their claim, to be precise. Abelard wears Serian, the old woman directs her gaze over your shoulder, Seneschal and right hand of the now departed Theodora von Valencius, and over now extant hair. The colorless eyes of the Master of Seals suddenly fix on Cassia, a lady navigator of House Orcelio whose name and deeds are unknown to me. She points her finger at the old ledger. It says here that the Von Valencius dynasty has owed your house one gold throne for 30 cycles. Here, take this. And I, at last, will mark the matter closed. Okay. Cassia stares in puzzlement at the gleaming coin in her hand. Uh, I... House Orcelio thanks you for your service, Master of Seals. The old woman smacks her lip in satisfaction and nods curtly. Of course I know who is standing before me. It is my job to know. <clears throat> Jay shifts, deliberately putting her jewel dogmatic on display. Does that mean that my reputation has preceded me as well, esteemed Damar? No, I have received no reports about you. <laughs> Wonderful. Tell me about the work of the Adeptus Administratum. The Master of Seals tuts in displeasure. One would think the Protectorate's hair has no care for his tongue if he is so willing to wag it to the point of blistering. However, I despise servant of the Emperor that I am, do not possess the gift of an allocated time. Let us proceed to the matter of your application. Fair enough. My, my companion wishes to obtain a Mercatum Tabula Officiale. The Master of Seals peers over, uh, peers over her ocular lens at Jay in disbelief. Then she looks at you. I take it you are a sponsor. In that case, you must submit a written application in conformity with template 40401, as well as written permission from the processing and notarization of the personal data of your most sacred personage. Without it, I cannot issue Mistress Heidari. Mistress Heidari, the form for collecting the seals required to obtain the Mercatum Tabula Officiale, the certificate of an official trade representative. At these words, the, the, saccharine, and the saccharine smile drops from Jay's face. Seals? What seals? We will discuss that when Cordon von Valanches had prepared the primary documentation. Abelard lets out a stoic sigh and rolls his eyes. You get the feeling that this is not his first, no, his first personal interaction with the administrative bureaucracy, nor is it his second. Uh, there is no way of getting around these formalities. Fear the wrath of the Immortal One, your lordship. What would become of a protectorate or even the Imperium itself if every person did what you are proposing? No. Lex Imperialis, Volume 249, Paragraph 18.2. Amendment of the 12th cycle of the previous millennium clearly states. Actions that circumvent the sacred law of the Imperium in pursuit of personal gain are a manifestation of human weakness, which is subject to eradication. Damn. Okay. Let's just comply and complete Application Form 40401. The perfectly sharpened quill scratches pleasantly on the parchment, but for the first few minutes. The obfuscating... The obfuscat... Ob, obfusc... The obfuscatory... I can't. 
the obfuscatory phrasing, footnotes, amendments, you are forced to write out the same details over and over. About you, the protectorate, Theodora von Valencius, J, and then also every living person who bears your family name. If you do not know all the required information, you must complete supplementary forms. Oh my lord. If there's something I hate, it's bureaucracy. The Master of Seals nods in approval and stows the scroll into a tube lab labeled with your name. Next is the consent form for the processing and notarization of the personal data of your most sacred personage. Sigh forlornly. <laughs> Let's just do it. Give your written consent on the presented form. The scroll is whipped away into another tube by the Master of Seals. Protocol executed. Application received. Processed. Approved. The Servo Skull Scribe taps out each word after its mistress's pronounce pronouncement. Come on, esteemed Damar, what's that you were saying about seals? The old woman unhurriedly holds out a printed scroll to Jay. Here is your document, Mistress Haidari. Unfortunately, it does not yet have legal force. I can certify it as a sacred mercantum tab tabula officiale once it has received two seals of approval. They are easy to obtain. In the Imperium Court Administratum Servitors have... Uh, sorry. In the Imperium Court Administratum, servitors have been handling such tasks for over 150 cycles. There is one such servitor here on Dargonus in the Rogue Traders Palace. The second is duty-bound to keep the seal in the Telecus Epsilon system. Have I been there? And we got this. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, why can the seals not be affixed here in the Administratum Palace? According to Amendment 3C8, implemented by Perfectus Estinia II of Dargonus, one of the seals must be kept in the palace of the ruler of the Von Vlaises Protectorate, remaining a symbol of the unbreakable link between the Sacred Warrant and the Adeptus Administratum. The second seal, the ocular lenses perched on her nose, click as she rifles through mouldering scrolls with her wrinkled fingers, <coughs> is held in a Telecus Epsilon system in accordance with Decree OL008ZN. Unfortunately, after a fire 200 cycles ago, all that remains of the original decree is an addendum certified by an unknown adept with the initials AA. Instructions repealing this decree were ever received from Holy Terra, therefore the seal remains where it ought to be. Okay, so find administrative servitors and have them place two seals of approval. The goal is clear. The Master of Seals nods with satisfaction. Please do return once you have prepared the documents. All right. It's about time. So I know that we picked up a seal somewhere in the past. Ah, right. Okay. So the one in Genus, right? Genus is the second most important mystery to center on the vault. Eh? One of the seals must be kept by one of the officials there. Oh, what is this? A new contract. Oh, what? Ah, right, right, right. I didn't do this because I... Yeah, okay. I know, I know. Um, but I think we have this already. And this one I have to look in the palace. Clementia Wersarian must be in charge of the mystery. Okay, cool. So we know where to go. Uh, what about Jay's... Oh, it's this one, okay. That is Jay's Victory quest. Awaits. No, don't close the door. Don't close the door. Yeah. Okay. Read. Wait. Ah, oh, right. The ship. Because we have to travel between two places. Okay. This loading wasn't actually that long. Uh, palace. She is no longer required. Interesting. Okay. So I'll take it out, and I'm gonna bring Pascal in. The one thing I'm afraid of is if I'm switching around my people. Ah, no, never mind. I was thinking about the time that one of my ship positions had been removed. And I thought it was because I had taken Edita out of my party. But that wasn't it. It's because on one of our quests for Edita, she actually gets removed from, you know, our party to become an NPC. All right, so let's go over here. 
And I'm gonna start skipping these loadings. It always feels like going from the outside to inside of a house shouldn't take this long. But it does. And Clementia is over here. Oh, there's Jay as well. Mr. Seidari, my patience is not easily exhausted, but you are coming very close. I shall repeat myself again. No, I will I will be not issuing you any seal. Not in exchange for your honest word, nor for a bribe. I can see the family resemblance with Abelard now. You cannot see farther than your own nose, my dear Clementia. It wasn't a bribe, it was a gift. Now about that seal. Uh-huh. Let the rogue trader decide. I'm guessing that pink shouldn't be there. Let's try to ignore it. Your, can I can I remove it with zoom? No. Your lordship, I apologize for this ugly scene, but might I ask that you rein in Mr. Saidari and put a stop to her inflammatory actions toward me? As the exalted one is my... Oh, it's gone. Uh, is my witness, Shireen. I have tried everything I could to spare you any unnecessary headache over the seals for the Mercatum uh, Tabula Officiale. I even showed this aid with a temper worse than a sandstorm, the certificate with your signature. But your Chancellor merely kept battling me away with her flail of baseless denials. I suspect that the reason for this has nothing to do with my humble personage. Clementia <clears throat> purses her lips and glowers at Jay. Oh no, this isn't about me at all. Jay narrows her eyes as she peers into Clementia's face until the latter finally looks away. I see. Well, Chancellor, will you tell us yourself or shall I help you? Whatever is the matter, Mr. Swerserian? I am afraid that my words may anger your lordship. Clementia lowers her head in shame as if offering it up to be removed from her shoulders. The seal you are looking for was lost over a quarter of a century ago. Her ladyship Theodora von Valencius ordered a new one to be delivered from the Imperium, but, as you well know, we are a long way away from Holy Terra. And with warp storms ravaging the Coronas' expanse, we have been unable to receive a replacement to this day. Oh, we have this one. Yeah, this is the one we picked up, right? Uh, this doesn't matter, no. So give Clementia the seal with the winter scale coat of arms. Could this be the seal in question? But why is it the winter scale seal? This is, without a doubt, the administrative seal from winter scale's realm. But why is it the original, not a copy? Ah, I think I understand. Well, the laws of the Imperium do not prohibit heirs of other houses from using the seal in times of need. I will order to have servants of the machine cult create a duplicate so as to avoid such embarrassing predicaments in the future. Uh, okay. There is something I must discuss with the Chancellor in private. Interesting. Oh, by all means, Shireen. I dare not waste any more of the precious balm that is your time on matters related to me, if I may excuse myself. Actually, there was nothing else. Okay. <laughs> A nice curtsy. I am at your service at any time, day or night, your lordship. Right, so for some reason, <coughs> she is now highlighted in pink. Okay. Uh, so... Ah, so return to the palace of the Depths of Intratum. Okay. Ah, no, wait, we don't have this one yet. But I, but I was there already. Hmm. I think this this shows up not because I have a new contract, but because I have one that I can complete. I think that's why. Okay, so... Kind of a lot of back and forth. Do you have something new for me? Achilles? No. Alright, so let's uh, get out of here. I will skip the loading. Okay. We're gonna have another loading. And this is what I don't really enjoy with these areas. Or the way that the game is done, or maybe it's because of Unity, I don't know. But quests that involve a lot of back and forth with a lot of loadings is not very enjoyable. 
And here we are. I think this loading is actually kind of quick. Uh, she has to come again. Alright. And... I'm wondering if I still need to find the... Um, the other one on Janus, or if this one is enough. I'm kind of confused about that, honestly. Okay, so we shall speak with the thingy again. The lady. I won't tolerate weakness. Ah, Corda von Valence, you have returned. I hope the sacred document I entrusted to you last time has now successfully passed through the approval procedure. That is exactly what I am doing at present. I guess. The Master of Seals not in satisfa satisfaction. Please do return once you have prepared the do- Ah, oh, never mind. Okay. So here is your paper complete with seals. The ocular lenses on the old woman's nose emit a subtle hum as she adjusts the magnification. Oh no, obtain the last seal. Yes, oh yes, indeed, it's perfect. The seals are authentic, so we may continue with the certification procedure. Follow me, please. So, do I still need a seal, or is it done? I don't really understand. There's a guy with a hat. What is this? It's like a tribunal. There is a lot of people. This is your queue. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> this is your queue and your ticket number is... The old woman's ocular lens hums uh, as, the, as she zooms in on the paper in her hand. 394. <laughs> when it is your turn to be seen, the ranking prefect will review your documentation again and sign the official certification of, for J. Heydari to possess a Mercatum Tabula Officiale. You will have a bit of a wait, but it will be worth it in the end, yes? <sighs> okay, so if I were dogmatic, I would go for this one, but I am an iconoclast, so if I must queue, then queue I shall. Then I bid you good day. May the law and the emperor keep you. This is like a, a joke quest, basically, right? Follow my lead. We're just waiting around. The crowd hums and surges like the sea in foul weather. The smell of unwashed bodies, ancient parchment and ink assault your nose. For many petitioners, this is not their first cycle waiting to be seen. None shall stand in Damn. my way. But what am I supposed to do here? Menas. Can't talk to him. Oh, take your place in the queue. New challenge for me. What is this first? Bundles of wires have been ripped out of the servitor's neck and the yellow fluid is seeping from its damaged joints. How angry would the person have to be to do this? It's about time. Let's take our place. The queue hums with thousands of voices. So, and everybody's kind of sitting down or doing something else. Someone has rolled out bedding and it's settling down to sleep. Someone is playing some bizarre musical instrument. Many are praying. Several highborn petitioners are debating who is here on the most important business. You have to admit, the magnificent administ administrative machinery of the Imperium isn't without its rough edges. Jay smiles sheepishly, eyeing the queue. But what a thrilling adventure this is turning out to be, Shireen. I have never seen anything like it before. And sometimes it's good to take a break from constant traveling and to give all the hot blood newcomers a chance to cover themselves in glory without us in the way. <laughs> Scratch the back of your neck. You have whiled away 30 seconds of your wait. You wonder how long you have left to go. Let's count the people in the queue. The people are constantly moving, coming and going, changing places or simply disappearing from view. On your first attempt, you count 238 petitioners. On your second attempt, you count 244. On your third attempt, the next batch of unlucky souls is ushered into the hall and you lose count. 
Wonderful. <laughs> Yawn. The minutes drag by intolerably slowly. Somewhere in the queue, a child is howling at the top of its lungs. The palace adepts are sedately moving documents from one pile to another, shuffling papers. Several petitions have gathered in a huddle and are swapping rumors, while someone has laid down for a nap on a nearby bench. Uh, let's just wait patiently here. It's a good thing we don't have, have to, we don't have to actually wait. In the last eight hours, my God, the only thing that has changed in the waiting hall is the warden shift. The petitioners in the queue placidly await the blessed hour when their appeal will be heard by the high-ranking servants of the Imperium. The entry queue perks up at a sudden announcement. Number 285 proceeds to the available window. What was my number? Wasn't it 300, I think? Throne, take me. What torturous trial have we let ourselves in for? Jay almost wells in despair. So much precious time lost, and we've only moved three places ahead. At this rate, we'll be old and grey before we get out of this Kusherin. Okay. <laughs> Do not forget, you are the reason we are here. And that was the will of the Exalted One, Shireen. Jay throws up her arms and lowers her head. And the Exalted One has granted me insight as to how, with a simple wave of your hand and a few wise words, we can ease our arduous weight. The simplest way is to make these lowly subjects bow down before the blinding radiance of our, lit of our title, Shireen. The second option requires a little more... Patience. I have already found our first victim, uh, the compassionate citizen who is standing 50 paces ahead of us in the queue. Simply offer the right words to unlock his heart and he will gladly swap tickets with you. And also, you have the power to solve the problems of some petitioners, removing their need to visit a coveted window. After all, is there anything an ordinary citizen could want that is beyond the power of the conqueror of the stars to grant? Alright. So... Open fire on the crowd? Man, I love it. We shall solve the problems of the common people. A wise decision, Shireen. Cold traders always say, if you can solve a problem with hard cash, then that's just the cost of doing business. Jay gives you a conspiratorial wink and backs away slightly. Oh, exalted one. Could today be my, could today be my lucky day? No longer will I have to stand in this hall, waiting day and night for my turn to come, for this kind Lord of House Von Valence is the benefactor of the downtrodden, and he has solved my problem. So people will start gathering, hearing this, I imagine. Esteemed Lord, take pity on this poor youth as well. I will give you everything I have, I swear before the Emperor. Only help me solve my problem. We do not need everything, poor wretch, only your place in the queue. Uh, listen to the young man. The young man in a worn work overalls comports himself with unusual grace for a commoner. My lord, I have been in this queue for two dozen moons already, <sighs> trying to get a permission slip to wed my fiancée Zazi. Unfortunately, the servants of the administrator refused to grant it without the signature of a high-born sponsor. Sure, dude, I'll marry you. Yo, lady, chill. Out of my way! Elbowing aside onlookers left and right, a richly dressed lady with a beauty mark augment above her lip charges toward you. A beauty mark augment. <laughs> Esteemed lord, my eighth offspring has lost his mind. He has decided to renounce his family, his noble title, and his talent as a healer, all for the sake of some tattered wife from the middle levels. A union with the commoner will put an end to his studies at the university. But should Dargonus and the official Medicae be deprived of a capable chi chirurgeon because of a passing fancy, Zazie is a healer too, and she helps the people of the Hive a great deal more than any lily-white chirurgeon with a diploma. I do not want to live a life of idleness in the spires of Dargonus like you, not when I know there are thousands of unfortunate people in the lower levels who need my help. That's honorable. I have no interest. Okay. The lives hold no value. In the name of House on Blanches, I hereby make her fiancé a lady of the court and release her from... You wish to study alongside your beloved? Very well. I hereby grant you ownership of the Dragonus University of Medicaid. What? You may admit anyone you like? We lose profit factor. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not gonna give some random guy ownership of the university. Let's not be exaggerating here. So yeah, in the name of House of the Lanches, I hereby make your fiancé lady of the court and release it from any location there too. I mean, this is also kind of random, but sure. The young man spends several seconds opening and closing his mouth in shock. Th that means our marriage will finally be certified, 
And Zazie will be able to become a card agent now too. I don't know how to thank you, my lord. Here, please take my place. I will return later, this time with my fiancé. Okay. So, one person is dealt with. How many more do I have to take care of? You have an interesting way of doing business, Shireen. I'll keep that in mind. Jay's shrewd eyes are alight with interest as she watches the young petitioner leave. An old man. After allowing you a brief pause, a hunched ragamuffin approaches you. The old man's toothless mouth breathes out a putrefying cloud of air as he speaks only three words. Death for life. Jay peers over the man's shoulder to read his crumpled form. You are here to request mortification? So that your organs go to your granddaughter as an inheritance? She will hardly want your worn-out body parts, old-timer. The ragged man shakes his head and covers his face with his wrinkled hands. Servitor, disposal. Only now do you notice the tattoo on his right hand, the symbol of the Adeptus Administratum and several interlocking chains. It seems this old fellow is the propriety of a prefect of this palace. Jay looks at the man's form again and reads back in horror. The granddaughter of this poor wretch was turned into a servitor 16 Dargonas years ago. And after a recent accident, she was listed for disposal. And now this old man is volunteering to be spare parts for a soulless tin can. May the Exalted One keep me from such a fate. Man... So we're basically giving away Profit Factor to help the common people. If I give away Profit Factor for everybody that comes asking, I'm gonna be very poor. You don't have to die old man if you have to service and time must come to release her. I will give the order to your own repair, but if you wish to be... Uh... Man... I don't want to lose profit factor, I'm sorry. <laughs> I will give the order for our granddaughter to be repaired, but if you wish to be with her forever, you will also be subject to servitude in perpetuities. The old man nods in understanding. Yes, I understand. Emperor, watch over you. I mean, he's dying anyway, right? I could probably heal him with the profit factor loss, but... Interesting. So that is how the ruler of worlds and all the stars in the sky act when he finds an unfortunate on the edge of his magnificent orbit. Jay nods pensively and beckons the next petitioner forward. A wealthy lady. A mature woman in a finely made but threadbare dress greets you. I heard you were helping those in need. Well, my family, it's devastated. My life's work, oh, my shop selling rare hats burned to ashes. I am living out my last years as a widow, alone in a cold deserted manner, without servants, diversions or delicacies befitting my status. The woman falls silent, her brow raised in expectation of your response. <laughs> yeah, I don't really care about you, lady. If she is wealthy, screw you. Oh, God, no. Perhaps I can rebuild this hat shop of yours? The woman's beleaguered eyes part to life. Why, that's a wonderful idea. Please take my place in the queue here, I insist. I will leave my details with your retinue and go. Okay. If it doesn't cost me profit factor, I'm gonna give her the the shop. Oh, thank God. Well, that was amusing. I paid off the last few onlookers who were willing to give up their place. It's a pity they aren't all so amenable. Jay inspects the tickets she now holds and nods with satisfaction. We've moved forward considerably in the queue, Shireen, but you aren't ready to stop there, are you? Sister Argenta, for instance, Jay's voice becomes noticeably warmer, she could engage the people in a prayer or tell a story about some saint or other in exchange for their queue tickets. You could also ask Idira to use her talent. On second thought, no. That could be more disastrous than a suddenly erupting volcano, Shireen. Forget it. Let's just wait here. I don't want to exploit my companions for this. Another eight planetary hours go by. The queue has hardly moved. The adept in the next window was dealing with rebelling machine spirits in his cogitator, so the petitioners from that queue were diverted to the middle of yours. God damn, man. Oh, there's something wrong with the system. 
Shireen, you're a saint, have I told you that before? You must be, because I don't see any other reason why you would show such fervent but senseless patience. Can't we hurry things along? Let's just wait patiently. The next eight hours pass surprisingly peacefully. Nothing unusual happens, all the certification offices are at their windows and are accepting petitioners, and you have even started growing accustomed to the sounds and smells of this place. Well, Shireen, maybe this time you will lose patience with being patient and decide to move things along a teensy bit faster? No. Continue waiting, woman. Oh, is the game gonna force me to... Or is it just being annoying? Oh. The hum of activity returns to the queue. Petitioners exchange glances, clutching their paperwork. After a few seconds, you realize that the number being called out by the servo skull for the third time is the one on your ticket. Do you know what gets better with time, Shireen? I'm a second lovemaking. Remind me of that if I ever ask you to stand in a queue again. Okay. What are you waiting for, Shireen? Let's go. We have another couple of hours with a certification officer to get through. Damn. So, officer of the administratum. The certification officer leans over the document, his smoothly shaven head gleaming. His augmented ocular eyes were as the lenses zoom in and out. With quiet scratching sounds, the cogita quills that serve in place of the officer's fingers make notes on a fine sheet of paper. The document is hereby certified, says the rasping voice to the metal jaw with his integrated vox. Return to the Master of Seals in order to proceed, and may his light and wisdom guard you. Next. Ugh, this was a... an annoying quest. But kind of like a, a fun little quest. If you like reading, of course. The Temple of Law and Order greets you, Cordon von Valentius. You have returned with all the necessary paperwork, I presume. Here, all of the seals placed by a certification officer. Wonderful. The Emperor blessed you with patience greater than the, than the apportioned to ordinary mortals. Allow me to verify the authenticity of your documents for the final time. The old woman ha holds the documents close so that they are almost touching her nose, her mechanical ocular lens is clicking incessantly. Yes, yes. Confirmed. Everything is in order. And this one? Ah, the seal is smudged slightly. I will kill you. Jay's smile evaporates, revealing her true emotions. Void scorpion scratch out my eyes. Now what? Idina stares at Jay in surprise and lets out a whistle. Well, that came out of nowhere. Hmm. I suppose I can overlook it, given that the rest has been certified correctly and promptly. Congratulations, Jay Hedari. You are now the holder of a Mercatum Tabula Officiale. Do not forget to repeat the certification process every 100 Terran cycles. Uphold the law of the Imperium proudly and honorably in the world of the Cronus Expanse. And one more thing. Loss of the certificate is a grievous transgression, Mr. Sedari. Lose the original document and you will be unable to regain your status as an official trade representative. Not even with the Rogue Trader's endorsement. Yes, yes, esteemed Damar. Give me the certificate already, come on. Jay's eyes dart over the Mercatum Tabula Officiale and shine with the light. Praise the exalted one who saw me through all these trials, Shireen. This is something to tell the grandchildren about. How a humble mortal became a trade, represent a trade representative of the Imperium. Let's not bother the Damar any longer, Shireen. Why don't we discuss our next step on the ship? Yes, let's please get out of here. I'll lay claim to the star. This place will drive somebody crazy. And we still have to speak with her. On the ship. I'm gonna drink some coffee. And here we are. So... Ah, oh, come on, you take... You take time, don't you? Yeah, I forgot. I'm still not accustomed to loading screens. So this will progress our quest. I'm kind of curious if we're gonna get profit factor from having her, um, you know, being a trade representative. That would be cool. Sherin, light of my eyes, give her a boons and savior of the needy. From now on, two sons will grace the firmament of the Fon Valencius Protectorate. One bright and powerful, like the rogue trader himself, and the other slightly more humble, like his unassuming partner, the diligent owner of the Mercatum Tabula Officiale, and all around the light, Jai Hidari. As I promised before, my crew will be your eyes and ears across the entire expanse, Sherin. 
Just give them time. And of course, the assistant to official trade representative Jai Hidari is already rushing to Dargonish to deliver goods of rare and exquisite quality to you and your people, O oh master of many worlds. And once again, thank you, Sherin, from the bottom of my humble heart. Is it just me or does her voice sound different from before? Might be wrong. <clears throat> This sounds like a kind of like a sexual thing. You are welcome, Jay. It is what friends are for. A rogue trader cannot have friends, Sherin. Only servants for whom the word of their master is supreme law. And partners to whom the favor of the warrant bearer is the highest reward for their mutual efforts. Why are you looking at me like that? How many friends does the soul that shines down upon Holy Terra have? You are welcome to call our relations whatever you like, Sherin. After all, words mean little. But you have taken good care of me, and so I would like to take good care of you. And go slightly beyond the strict terms of our agreement. Here, I brought a small gift as a token of gratitude. And may the Exalted One keep watching over the paths that you tread. Cool. <clears throat> I'm confused about this. Didn't I just give her the the merchant certificate? I did, didn't I? I think this is because I I haven't spoken with Jay before advancing her quest. And I think if I want to try this option, I'm going to quick save before in case it gets kind of like soft locked or something. Okay, <clears throat> so for right now, let's just say, I'll oh, see you later. I have no doubt you will. Damn it. Okay. Well, I'll 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 just go with it. Honestly, I'm not gonna repeat all of this again. Uh, okay, we got a battle scarred cape and some experience. What is this? What is this? A scribe servo skull? This servo skull is designed to spread the glory and splendor of its mighty own. It's like a pet, right? So where did I get this one? It looks cool. Where is he? Absolutely not. Mm. Okay. Um So just to make sure, I'm going to quick save. To see if you this has anything to do with the request with again. The splendor of your presence again, Sherin. Have you decided to treat your soul to the fruits of my eloquence? Or do you wish to discuss business with the newly appointed owner of a Mercatum Tabula Officiale? So I will help you acquire a merchant certificate. Oh, Sherin, thank you for such generosity. I will humbly wait until you steer your vessel towards Dargonus. <laughs> the Mercatum Tabula Officiale. It sounds almost as majestic as the Warrant of Trade. Yeah, so... Oh. I'm gonna quick load this, just to make sure that that interaction doesn't break any kind of, like, state of the quest. Otherwise, I would be very upset. There we are, I skipped the loading for you guys, and it's basically time to finish the episode. This game does really have a lot more dialogue than other CRPGs, I will say. But now I'm kind of confused, because where am I supposed to go? I, I, I guess we're done with Dargonus? Yeah, I think we're done with Dargonus. We have to go to Kyavagama. Oh, 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 wait. Jay has proposed for the road trader and she celebrated acquisition of the Mercatum Table Official with her crew on footfall. Aha! A social event in the company of coal traders would prove to be an exciting diversion. Alright, so let's go to footfall then. And take care of that. So... 
footfall is far away. Emergency aboard the void ship. A foul warp entity has pierced the thin veil of the gallery field and spawned unimaginable beasts of natural hues. The Vox systems are picking up the crewman's screams and the warp fiends load them, load some giggling. Situation demands immediate intervention. Okay. Oh! -ho! The rogue tentative of the retinue will personally go and face his contemptible foes. Let's go. Let's have some action. And hopefully it's not a very long fight, because if it looks like a very long fight, I might just leave it for the next episode. Okay, so what do we have here? Oh, oh, oh okay. we have three pink horrors. These are the ones that split into two blue horrors uh, when they die, I feel. But I don't think it should take that much time. This, I think, is bad. It's nothing it is bad. Okay. Alright, so how do I want to do this? Cover kind of sucks because of this purple thing. Which will complicate matters. I feel like I'm going to place Abelard maybe over here. Argenta will stay here. I know she's kind of in front of them. They aren't really very melee oriented, are they? They just cast stuff. Oh, I can send it up there. Would this be useful at all? If I put it up here... I mean, maybe. Okay, so Avalard goes there. She goes there. I will have Cassia over here. To give her the, the extra turns and whatnot. Idira... Can go over here. This should be covered. I don't, I don't know why this is not Marta's cover, but... Whatever. Or actually go there. And Pascal goes here. And my character will will go... Well, you can just stay here, I suppose. Okay, so I'm starting, play, I'm starting to play. Can I reach Argenta? I can if I move. Oh, I... Sure. Never wavered in the face of adversity. Here we are. So let's go for the heavy bolter. Chance to hit is very good. Try to knock him down, I suppose. So this and that. Oh no, wait, because I want to trigger wildfire, right? Shouldn't she have Oh no, yeah, yeah. Because I have flash fire. I can make this cost only only three versatility stacks. <clears throat> so I can shoot once just to get this down to two. Yes. Doubt is for the weak. And now I can swap to my heavy bolter. Get wildfire. Get devastating attack. See if I can bring him down. Why are you trying to shoot your own cover, woman? Come on, please. Very good, he went down, that's what I wanted. Let's go for a Furious Recital. Deeds is and pass. And you go back Hold here. Pass. Cassia. I think I'm going to... Well, I'll just give it a... Wait, why can't I do this? This is not the seize the initiative turn for whatever reason. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let me just uh, bring these guys over here. If they fail, of course. If I may. Good. And I think I will just buff Abelard. No, I'll buff Idira. And I want the front line to be over there. 
I want the rear to be over here. I'm not accustomed to being And I want the back line to be here. Isn't this a job for the sir? And this is stronghold stratagem, gives us more armor. So go here. I am a navigator. And a now we have our normal turn, which this didn't do what it was supposed to do, but but okay. If I come over here, can I no. But if I go down, I can, right? Yeah, this works. Okay, so let me think. I think I want to go down here. Buff myself. Isn't this a job for the serves? And try to stun them twice. Or maybe only once because I use this first. That's okay. If I may. Uh I, I didn't mark anybody as prey. <laughs> oh my god, you know what happened? I think we destroyed a piece of cover. The game counted the cover as being a prey and triggered Saver the kill and gave Idira an extra turn. Ugh. <laughs> uh. My goodness. My goodness. And I think I'm gonna take advantage of this. I'm not gonna... If the game is being silly, I'll just be silly as well. But of course. Are they stunned, by the way? Neither of them are stunned because they both passed. Yeah, I have to find a way to reduce their stats. And what? Buff Abelard, I suppose? Was, was it you? Or so let's actually mark people as prey. Anything so else? this isn't very stupid. But of course. We go again. Let's try to stun them one more time. Oh, they play after Cassia. So if they play after Cassia, no, I don't want her to try that again. Let's just give an extra turn to Abelard. Emperor. And Mr. Avalard, I think we are. Hmm. I think I'm gonna come over here. Wait, where is my. Oh, right, I can't move. Uh, sure. So, Indeed. brace for impact, endure, charge this guy here because I wanna be close to him. Or close to this one. Close to this one. I will do my duty. Take a nice hit. I'm gonna try and taunt them both. At your back and call. Taunted and taunted. Perfect. And just build versatility here. Nice. Pass. Pass. Where are you going? My ears okay. are ringing. Mm -hmm. Now, Idira, let's keep on giving everybody more resolve. Anything else? You are at 11, so now this deals a lot more. Yes. Um, let me see. Do I just want to kill them straight up, or do I want to buff people with warp speed? I guess buffing will make this go faster, right? Ooh, maybe not. Never mind. Uh, it still works. Okay, so warp speed on Abelard. Can I fall back now? We triggered Perils of the Warp, which I actually like. It increases our Psy rating. And we just kill this guy. Be gone. Down he goes. Now we have two of these, of course. We also leveled up. Why is my momentum going down? Just a minor setback. Reason custom. What? Why 
Was it the manifestation? I... Not gonna lie, I am confused. If I do this, I'm actually not hitting Pascal, which is kind of amazing. Oh, they summon three blue horrors. So I have to be careful about killing this guy. Because the blue horrors might actually mess me up here. Interesting, isn't it? I don't appreciate that. Okay, so I want to build versatility first. Which probably means... Shoot. And don't shoot him again. I refuse. I can do a wildfire and act. burst over there. And I can even buff with extra damage. I'll do it. Now, this chance here is for the cover, not for Pascal. As the Emperor commands. <laughs> Kinda sucked, but... Faith without deeds is worthless. Entrench. Pascal, what are we doing, my friend? We're gonna buff the party. Running by the right. And... Do I just want to move him over here and start bashing with the axe? I don't... I think that's dangerous. Okay, so can I apply this like here? I think I can. We got it, good. And just single fire on someone. Pew. It's fine. Now, Abelard, we have four stacks of versatility. I am going to cast Endure, as always. Indeed. Do this. Damn it. And now I'm gonna kick this guy. It will be done. And now I'm going to wildfire. At your back and call. And slash them again. Victory is the target well struck. Very lovely. And I think I want to actually make Abelard my servant. I think he's gonna be the one killing the most here. I shall not fear. Okay, so take that. Take this, take All that. Let's assign objective over here. Give him a turn. So if I want to keep building versatility, it would be hit. I will do my an exemplary strike. And now this. At your beck and call. Reduce the dust. Awesome. Already an extra turn, uh, attack, sorry. I actually want this for Argenta to deal with that. And I can even charge that guy over there. It will be done. Perfection. Abelard is being freaking amazing, dude. Okay, Cassia, uh, what are we doing? Can I move this guy? I would love to move that guy. Come here, bitch. Me. If you insist, Lord Captain. Not you, that one. Isn't this a job for the serfs? I don't think it's working on that one for some reason. Okay. In any case, I can simply give him a turn again. Kick. Victory is imminent. At your back and for one fewer turns. And let's wildfire. It will be done. And test out our melt a scorching area attack. I appreciate that. Brace yourself, and you can. What if I tried this? I wonder if this would work. Me. This worked. Okay, interesting. Insist, Lord Captain. 
and just give him more toughness, I guess. It's fine. Take a hit. <laughs> he did um yeah, I don't want to burst this guy down. I don't want to expose him uh, before we get a chance to actually kill him and do a lot of damage. Like this. Was, was, okay. Was that you? Or... If I could kill this guy right now, I could use an heroic act to blow everything that comes out of him. Okay, so I will try that. There is movement in the Empyrean. Very good. Oh, it only spawned two. Okay. So they play after Idira. So heroic act over here. The wind bus wants to be <laughs> I love it so much. Immediate new um, heroic act. God damn, dude. And you just pass the turn. And now I can give Abelard an additional. Oh no, this is because. Okay. It's because she used an heroic act. Alright. So we have 94 stacks of tactical advantage. Inspire Abelard. And just shoot someone. No, assign objective. Parried. Parried. What is our parry chance currently? Very good. 100%. Nice. Uh, Argenta, you aren't doing much right now because you don't need to. Right? Um, yeah, let's just pass. So, sword enemy. We can go for a smack. I will do my grey hair. Hand. Wildfire, smack. At your beck and call. <laughs> Reduce the dust. No Here we can smack. It will be done. And done. Very, very nice. Pain and duty go hand in hand. Okay, so I guess these are like random encounters as you travel in the world map. In <laughs> Pathfinder, basically. Oh. Uh, okay, we're losing a lot of HP here. Doesn't matter because we're gonna go back to the ship, but still. Did I mention Just to make that sure. my whispers tell me jokes? Jokes that once Let's said go. aloud make your eyes bleed and blood curdle. I can never have Talk a fast blood. fight. It always takes a bunch of minutes. <laughs> okay, but yeah. This will be the end of this episode, my friends. As always, I want to thank you all for being here with me in the channel, watching some Rogue Trader. Uh, we're gonna start making our way, or keep making our way... Uh, back to Furibundus to celebrate with Miss J in the next episode and then probably just gonna continue working on new planets or new systems. Um, as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more, many more videos coming out soon and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone. <laughs>